like to welcome Will Zalatoris to the virtual media room for the RBC Heritage. Will, you're making your 16th start this season with six top 10s and 11 top 25 finishes, including last week's solo second and your Masters tournament debut. Just some comments on momentum and strength of your game heading into this week. Yeah, it's obviously an amazing week. Um, you know, I, I think I, I still wish I could put into words how much fun I actually had. Um, you know, I was able to appreciate playing in my first Masters because, of course, you know, I've, like I've said, you know, I really haven't taken anything for granted over the last two years. Um, going from, you know, Monday to Corn Ferry events to playing on the Corn Ferry Tour, possibly playing the Corn Ferry Tour for two years to then playing in my first Masters was just, it's a crazy wild ride that I've enjoyed every single minute of it. Um, but obviously to be in contention in Sunday, uh, on a Sunday at Augusta was obviously a dream come true. Obviously to come up one short, it'll sting forever, but I know that, you know, I can contend against the best players in the world and I know I'm capable of getting those two shots somewhere pretty soon. And while you're making your first appearance at this event, um, just comments on this week coming into it and uh, what you've seen on the course. Yeah, I love the golf course. It's in phenomenal shape. Um, I think it's it'd be a really good place for me. Um, you know, it's very tight off the tee. Um, you know, overhanging trees. Uh, obviously, you really got to work the golf ball into some of these greens just because of, you know, uh, just kind of the tight corners. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. I, you know, this was a tournament that, you know, even though a lot of people, you know, on paper, they say, well, you know, you hit it far, you know, this place kind of handcuffs your advantage. But obviously, you know, my iron play, I think it's the best part, about, best part of my game. And so this is an event that I've really been looking forward to. And I think it's one that um, this golf course really suits me actually pretty well. With that, we'll open up with questions for the media. We're going to go over to Shane with Golf Digest. Shane, go ahead. Uh, thanks. Um, just so you know, I think you might have jumped over Steve, but any, anyhow, um, Will, you're in a really interesting place uh, as a human being right now where already before the Masters, golf fans were starting to get to know your name, uh, and that obviously took a huge leap at Augusta. I mean, Adam Sandler tweeted at you. Um, so you're just on the crest of sort of becoming famous in a way, and I just am curious, you know, what your thoughts are on that. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Uh, and just sort of what is it like waking up with the, your world sort of changing around you? Yeah, you know, if I didn't like it, I'd probably need to find a new profession pretty quickly. Um, you know, it just comes with the territory. Um, yeah, you know, I think none of that will really sink in until I get home. Um, you know, it's definitely different, you know, going and picking up some food and people asking for autographs or pictures. Um, you know, I, I kind of humble myself and say, you know, I didn't win. I finished second. You know, it's like... You know, I felt like I've been getting some treatment like I ended up like I won, but it's like, you know, to me, it's it's funny um, and I and obviously I enjoy it. I mean, um, interacting with the fans, you know, they're the ones that we play for. They're the people that obviously are the ones that give us a job. So, um, yeah, it's it's honestly it's been fun. I don't think it'll sink in until I get back home to Dallas. Um, I think that's when things will probably change a little bit. Um, I think about a, a month ago, I asked you uh, about looking like Owen Wilson, and you had a snappy response immediately, uh, which is very funny. But anyway, correct me if I'm wrong. Are you somebody who enjoys the stage? You like that aspect of, of golf? Yeah, I mean, you know, the Owen Wilson comparison, the Happy Gilmore comparison, or Happy Gilmore's caddy comparison. Um, Butch saying I look like a one iron without a grip on it. I. I think it's hilarious. I mean, you gotta embrace it. You know, it's, I, I think it's fun. I mean, hey, this is, um, it's entertainment. You know, this is obviously the really fun side of the job is, um, you know, it's, yeah, trust me, a year ago, if you said that Adam Sandler was gonna send out a tweet about me, I would've thought you were on something. But, um, but it, it's, it's fun, you know, I, it's, uh, 
there's so many funny comparisons that I've gotten and that's like, you know, I've put i I've put all the comparisons on my wedges. You know, I've I put the the Wow Owen Wilson one on, on one of my wedges. I put Mr. Gilmore and McCaddy on one. I just put a I just got a new sixty that I said, Do you look like a one iron with without a grip on it? So just you gotta have some fun out here. I mean, we're playing golf. You don't need to take this job too seriously. I appreciate it, Will, thank you. Yeah, thanks man. And we'll go over to Sean Martin. Hey, Will. Curious. Um, people ask about you know the iron play a lot. What do you think makes you a, a good iron player or made that the strength of your game throughout the years? Yeah, you know, um, I think it's just in reality. I think it's just trying to give myself as many looks as possible. Um, I don't really. You know, people will see me knock something tight, you know, like on 17. Um, you know, I heard some comments of like, wow, he's firing at everything. And it's like, you know, I'm aiming 13 feet left of that flag and I pushed it, you know, 13 feet and it ends up being perfect. And the reality is like a lot of guys do that out here, but I don't really tend to overdo things. I don't like to, you know, undo a par five. I don't need to hit the big high fluttery three wood in there and try to knock it tight and make three. I think what I tend to do is I just tend to give myself a bunch of really good looks and make sure that I put myself on the green as fast as possible. And when the putter gets hot, the putter gets hot, just like last week. Um, you know, and last week I really hit the ball well, specifically wedged through eight iron last week. Um, I really, really struck it nicely and put myself on the right spots to give myself the best looks. And I think that's why I played well. Um, you know, I think, you know, on top of that too, is I probably the, to get on the technical side, I, I judge my distance with my irons very well. I really only have a couple shots that I really stick to. Um, you know, if I need to get a little extra distance out of something, I tend to put the ball in the back of my stance and hammer a draw. And if I need to take something off, I choke up on it and hit a little cut. But the speed stays the same. And I think with me being such a, um, you know, such a high speed guy that, being able to kind of hone in my speed and keep it the same, but also being able to regulate distance, I think is really the biggest factor as to why I'm such a good iron player. And then having so much success at a young age from making the junior at 12 and playing it five times and a good amateur career, before you missed the first stage of Q school, what was the most disappointing thing you faced on the golf course? Uh, I actually missed a U.S. junior my junior year of high school. So if I had, made that one I would have set the record all-time record for appearances um, but obviously you know winning the one winning the last one makes up for that for sure um, yeah cool thank you yeah go Giants <laughs> and we'll go over to Steve Namiglia with USA Today oh and we'll go over to uh, Pete Acobley with the Associated Press. Uh, hey, Will. Um, does your performance at Augusta does it even does it increase your expectations when you come to this event and other events going forward? That's a really good question. I mean, not really. I mean, if I told you that I was expecting to just play in the Masters a year ago, I wouldn't have believed you. Um, I haven't really had, you know, I, I hate, you know, I've said this before, but there's there's a lot of merit to this of, I really haven't put expectations on myself to play well. It's not like when I was playing at the US Open with just Corn Ferry status that I'm trying to have a, you know, oh, I'm gonna go get a top 10 this week, or I know, you know, I'm expecting to win or whatever. I just have really done a good job of just kind of playing my game, playing within myself, and I've done that literally since Monday qualifiers on the Corn Ferry Tour. And I, I, you know, like I've said a million times, I hate the cliche, the media statement of just trust the process, but you know, it's gotten me to this point now, and there's no reason to all of a sudden now change, you know, oh, I need to, you know, I, I should go out and win this week, or, you know, have, have all these expectations, or, you know, I should win a major, or you know, make a Ryder Cup team. It's like, I, there's still stuff from last week that I'm really frustrated on that um, Josh Gregory and I and Troy Dent and I have worked on that I didn't do my best, and that's all that matters. 
Um, you know, the fact that I had a chance to win a major and especially the masters is awesome. But, you know, how do I get to that next step is to just fix what, you know, fix or improve on the skills that I have. And we'll go back over to Shane to follow up through the digest. Uh, hey again, Will. Um, Kevin Kisner was in here yesterday and said something interesting, which is that in his mind, people of your generation, the young players coming out now, are more comfortable with the media, have, have a really strong perspective, and most pertinently are ready to win faster than he thought he was ready to win, and people of his generation were ready to win. I asked Colin about this earlier, and I'd like to get your take of why you think that's so. Why you think you guys are more prepared for every aspect? Yeah, I mean, I think you can just thank Tiger for that. Um, Tiger, Jordan, you know, that's the thing that I, I've got a really close friend group of that. They, of course, all of our friends, they tend to humble, humble, uh, humble ourselves, I guess. But you know, that's the thing that we were joking about was, you know, wow, finishing second. In the Masters, you're only 24, you know, sky's the limit. And, you know, Jordan did that when he was 20, you know. It's, <laughs> so you put things in perspective. Um, but, yeah, Tiger coming out of the gates, you know, he's one of the few guys that um, would turn a four-shot lead into a seven-shot lead. You know, the reality is a lot of times you see more of guys having four or five and then, you know, kind of cruise in or maybe make a couple bogeys and win by two or three. And Tiger – just somehow always did it to go from four to seven or, you know, when all of a sudden, you know, it seems like the last hour of coverage is just a, you know, coronation. And I think seeing him do that, seeing a lot of younger guys do that, and the reality is obviously none of us have anything to lose out here. But, you know, it's just like last week when I'm playing in the Masters. Like, I don't have anything to lose. I, I, my, I'm playing in my first Masters. Let's enjoy this. You know, I've, I've watched this tournament for 20 years. Let's go have some fun. And I think that fearlessness of seeing Tiger do it has carried over over the last 20 years or 20 plus years. And I think that's why you're seeing guys like Colin coming out of the gates winning, Victor, Matt Wolf. And, you know, if you think about it, we were born kind of around when Tiger really started to take off. And so, you know, from 2000 to 2010, that was one of the best decades of golf ever. And we got to see it. Yeah, that's great. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. And unless there are any other questions, we'll finish up with Sean Martin. Sorry, I'm back with the hat. Um, <laughs> going off of Shane, I was wondering, you know, you're talking about Tiger, but just from your upbringing, whether parents, coaches, someone, was there someone that helped kind of preach that perspective that you showed that impressed many people last week um, on the golf course and in interviews, that kind of stuff? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a combination of a lot of people. I mean, obviously my parents, the most influential people in my life. Um, I think David Price is definitely – you know, I consider him a second father, if you will. Um, you know, he, we were joking on Monday that, hey, you know, it's a new week. You're tied for last. You know, you know, last week was fun, but, you know, we're starting over, starting back at square one. And, you know, even uh, DP, it was he always gets on me for saying, you know, um, in media, you know, stuff like that. So having guys that um, like DP and um, – my parents and Troy and Josh were, they're there to lift me up. And at the same time, I'm, I've just, you know, I've just got such a good support system around me that it, I'm really lucky and obviously to be that uh, fortunate on, you know, to have such great people around me off the golf course helps with what happens on. And then real quick, your mom ran track at Oregon, right? She did. What was her event? And is that where you get kind of your skinny feet from, you think? Yeah, she was a 400 and 800, so basically a sprinted marathon. So there was uh, – she's the toughest woman I know. There's no quit in that woman. And obviously, I think I got a little bit of her genes. Cool. Thank you. Go Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the questions we have. Thank you, Will, for taking the time, and best of luck this week. Yeah, thank you.